Hello everyone and welcome to another cool video tutorial here on rbeats.com. I'm Steve Holmes, Creative Director of Energy Design in San Francisco, and in this quick session I'm going to use an HD background clip from Rbeats and some very cool tricks and techniques in After Effects to finalize a DVD menu design that's not only HD and graphically strong, but will also be seamlessly looping, so this will look really really cool when we're done. Now if I look here in my composition window you can see the elements that make up the DVD menu, there are these sort of panels in which video or chapter information could go and if I just go full screen on that and do a quick preview you can see I've already animated the opacity of these little blipping lights on the corner just to give it some motion which is, is pretty cool and, and random. Now we want to add an element into the background here so what I'm going to do is pull in one of our Rbeats clips and this is the one over here in the project panel CDA125H2 and this is from the Code Rage HD collection. Now if I go ahead and open that and play it back, you can see the, the beautiful quality of this clip. It's very bright, it's very powerful, but what I really like about this is the wonderful 3D feel of it. it we've got this long sort of geometric mine shaft that goes all the way into the distance. Uh, it's computer generated, so it already has a loop, which is perfect. I'm going to go ahead and close that down and bring it into the timeline so it sits in the background of our composition and we are working at full 1920 by 1080 HD here which is also the size of the Artbeats clip. Now if you look here you can see it only takes up 12 seconds of the timeline. Well that's because the clip itself is only 12 seconds long but like I said it is a loop. If I just go to the out point of that layer and the in point you can see they are sort of graphically one frame apart. What we need to do is tell After Effects to expand that to fit the timeline. Now the reason for that is if you have a, a a looping DVD menu whenever the loop gets to the end there's always a slight pause or a jump as it resets and goes back to the beginning of the menu to start playing the video again so it's usually best to try and give if you can around about 30 seconds just so there's not always a noticeable jump every 10 or 20 seconds something like that so over here in the project panel I'm just going to select the clip go down to the interpret footage item and choose to loop it twice okay now you can see it expands the area in the timeline that I've got to work with and I can expand the entire length of the clip now so that now goes from the, the first loop into the second loop and continues all the way to the end and again if I go to the end frame and the first frame they still have that one frame apart view so we've got a 24 second loop here which is absolutely perfect now I'm going to add some more motion graphic elements to this composition now so I'll just go back to the beginning of the timeline over here in the project panel I've got a comp called data circles rotation if I go ahead and open that and just do a, a very quick preview let's just go down to half quality there and just do a preview there Basically, it's a series of illustrator layers that I've already animated using a random expression, which is also looping, which is very cool. So this is a really nice set of elements that can just sit somewhere in the interface and give it a very electronic feel, and I think will we'll work quite nicely with a, a 3D background like we have. So I'm going to close that comp down and bring it down into the timeline, and I'll make sure it goes uh, behind the data panels that are at the top and above our background clip. Now it'll come in and not be very visible because obviously it's white on a very light background so I'll just go ahead and isolate that layer so we can see it. Now what I want to do is scale it and move it into a different location so I'm just going to bring up the scale values here by hitting S on the keyboard and I'm going to scale this up to round about 140% something like that okay and I'll go up to 100% here because there is something I want to show you you can see that at 100% the edges here are slightly soft so what I'm going to do is make sure I come over here and choose collapse transformations or continuous rasterization which will basically pull in the original vector quality from the layers inside this composition so it just increases the look and feel of this now I'm also going to go ahead and apply an effect to this so we can see it with a different color so I'll go up to effects go down to generate and come down and choose fill now that will fill it with a default red what I'm going to do is just make that red slightly darker because a standard full-on 255 red um, when you come to compression for DVD and for the web it's not particularly the most friendly color so if I darken this down a bit it can help eliminate some of those jagged edges that will come from a red color now I've added that if I go ahead and turn off the solo icon we can see it against the original background okay now what I'll do is I'll just scroll over here and we're going to position this now so it sits kind of in the center of where all of these icons are coming out from now if I want to be precise I can come down to the timeline and just 
just sort of nudge it here and there to make numbers very even. So 530, 720, that's a, a good enough guess. So based against the original background, it's kind of cool. It looks like we have a set of rotating elements that are halfway down this 3D mineshaft, if you like, that uh, really sort of offset the design. So definitely helps having it filled in red. Now you'll notice that it also doesn't take up the entire length of the timeline, and that's because this original composition and the loop that's inside it is only 20 seconds long. Now we could go into the composition, change its length, and then go in and change all the expressions to make them play for longer. But in fact, time remapping is a much easier way to do it. It's basically a way to take all of the contents inside that comp and stretch their time inside this composition. The layer is already selected. I'm going to go up to the layer menu at the top of the screen, go down to time, go across and enable time remapping. You'll notice it puts two keyframes on here, which basically are the beginning and end of the current clip. All we have to do is move those around to either make it play faster or slower. Now, there's a lot more to time remapping than that, but in this instance, that's all we need to do. So what I'm going to do is go to the end of the timeline and just trim the layer so it's going to be visible, and then just simply drag that final keyframe, so what was the 20 second mark, and now drag it out to one frame past the end. Okay, now I want to make it one frame because when we go back to the beginning and also look at the end, you'll see there's one frame difference, which is our perfect loop. So now we have the background element and these red rotating shapes perfectly synchronized as a 24 second loop. Now the red itself doesn't stand out too well at this point, so what I'm going to do is do a duplication just to make it uh, a little bit more punchy. So select the layer, simply Command D or Control D on the PC and duplicate it on top of itself. That looks great. Now I also want to add kind of a fake 3D effect in here as well, and, and instead of adding cameras and doing 3D layers and everything else, I could just take the one that we've got and scale it up and make it sort of almost as if there's a set of these shapes slightly in front of us as we're looking down this tunnel. So a simple scale will do that, and don't forget we've got the Illustrator layers in there on continuous rasterization, so the quality will stay perfect. So I'm going to select the main set of items again, the, the 3D rotating shapes. I'm going to duplicate those once more, bring up the scale values. I'm going to hold down the shift key now so I can scale this really big, really fast, and go so they sort of come over almost towards the edge of the screen. So I don't want them to completely disappear, but around about 2400% or something like that. Now, those looking great, what I will do is also blur them out. So we have slightly a depth of field effect here. So go up to the effects, go down to blur and sharpen, come down and choose a fast blur. And I'm gonna crank this up to around 30 pixels. Now, if I do just look at this at full size, you can see that there's a slight feathering on the edge here. So one thing I will point out is when you have elements that go off the edge of the screen like that, do be sure in here to turn on repeat edge pixels. That will make sure that the feather goes all the way to the edge, okay? So again, just a few frames of that, you can see that all the elements are now rotating and we have sort of a foreground and a middle ground element here. So this is sort of pulling the design together very nicely. Now at this point, the design is really very colorful and for one purpose that might be great, but for what I'm looking for, it's uh, it's a little too bright and cheery. So I want to darken things down and do some serious color adjustment on our background Art Beats clip. So I'll just come down to the timeline and twirl these elements up, tidy them up a bit, and select the background Code Rage clip, okay? Now I'm going to add a series of effects here. The first thing I want to do is drain the color out, and for anyone who's ever seen my tutorials, the, the fastest way to do that really is to come down to Color Correction and choose Hue and Saturation, and just knock the Master Saturation down to minus 100%, okay? Now, I'd like this to actually flip the other way around. I think a negative version of this would look really cool. So I'm gonna go back to the effects, go down to channel, and simply choose invert. And you'll see the difference there immediately if I just go full screen, looks gorgeous. Invert channel, definitely a good option there. Now, whilst we've got it inverted, we could also do with darkening down some of the colors in there. So I'm gonna go back to the effects and go to color correction, come down and choose levels. And all I'll do is just adjust the gamma value here down to about 0.75. So we sort of pull these elements and the central red elements out a little bit more. Um, I think this is looking pretty cool. Now, I want to add a different effect here, and I'm going to use a third-party plugin for this, and this is from the Magic Bullet Collection. That's available from Red Giant Software, and it's got some wonderful color correction options in it, but I'm just going to use it for one specific purpose, which, honestly, you can replicate to some extent in After Effects, but involves a lot more steps. So I'm going to use this as a quick option here. I'm going to go down to my Magic Bullet Collection and go down and choose Looks. Now this will bring up an option allowing us to go in and edit the looks, and this will bring up an entirely separate interface called the Looks Builder. And just so you know, over here on the left-hand side, there are a series of presets for um, sort of different different effects like popular film or TV color effects, diffusion, film stocks and grain, and special effects and that kind of thing. So 
so there's really some wonderful things to play with there but I'm not going to do that at this stage what I'm going to do is come over here to the tools on the right hand side and under the lens setting I'm going to come down and choose edge softness and just drag this out into the screen now you see what it's done is it's added sort of a soft edge vignette uh, adjustment layer which is blurring out the edge here and then fading it back into focus well what I'm going to do is slightly reduce the size of this okay and then simply drag it over so its central point is roughly in the center of where all our elements are coming from. So it's like we're taking our camera now and adjusting focus so we're looking down into the shaft. Everything over here is blurred. And the other benefit of that, if I go ahead and click OK, is that when we come back, the focus is now taken away from the background and helps bring these elements for the DVD menu actually into the foreground. So a really cool option there by using the Magic Bullet looks. Now one more thing I'm going to do here is add a glow so these white highlights here in the background stand out a bit more. So again back to the effects, I'm going to go down to stylize and come down and choose glow. And I'll just change a couple of settings very quickly here. I'm going to increase the threshold to about 80%. I'm going to knock the glow radius up to around 30%. Okay, so they stand out a bit more. Then I'll go ahead and make sure that our glow colors are using the A and B color maps, both of which I will set to white. So we just get a nice bright glow there. And if I just progress through a few frames there, we can see that as the elements sort of become more visible before they go into a glow state, we get a real nice highlight on them and sort of over here on the left hand side. I think just graphically it offsets the black and the red very, very nicely. Now the final thing I want to do here is add a little bit of color and blur into these panels here. Now the idea behind the DVD menu is that these might contain video but maybe we're going to use them for something else, sort of an icon based technology or even just text or something like that. So the way these elements are visible here in the background it could be a, a little bit distracting so I'm going to use a nice little effect just to tone that down a bit. Now over here in the timeline I've got a layer that's hidden and I'm just going to go ahead and turn that on and isolate the layer so you can see what it is. It's basically the content areas of those six panels. So just, just those areas can be used essentially as an adjustment layer. So if I go ahead and turn all the layers back on but disable the top one so we can see just this panel's mask area here. I'm going to come in here and choose to turn it into an adjustment layer which will make it transparent but any effects now applied to this layer will affect all those layers underneath. So I'm going to go up to the effects. First thing I'll do is apply another fast blur. Okay, And this one I'll make about 20 pixels. In fact I'll just do about 40 so you can see what's happening. Okay, You see the blur is now being apply through the exact shape of those panels and those are illustrator files remember okay I'm going to drop that back down to about 25 something like that and then I'm going to go back to the effects go down to color correction and choose CC toner now this will allow us to adjust the tone of the color in there and I just want to introduce a little bit of red into the midtones so I'll just pick up the eyedropper come down here and choose one of the reds from our background elements now it looks very strong at the moment but remember the original panels that sit on top also have some white in them so if I go ahead and turn those back on you can now see that we have a sort of a faded version of that red if I just scrub a few few frames through there you can see we've got a really nice sort of glow effect we've got a blur we've got a slight red coloring again it just helps pull those elements out and make them much more distinctive design items so if I now show you a finished render, you can see the final result. It looks really, really nice. Now the graphic elements and even the expression used to loop the, the randomly rotating red shapes is quite easy to achieve, but the design really pulls together thanks to the 3D motion graphics and the seamless loop provided by the background clip, which was from the Artbeats Code Rage HD collection. So with a few effects and changes and really just a handful of minutes, all of these elements now blend into one theme and also can be used for more menu variations and designs in the future. So I hope you've enjoyed yet another cool Artbeats video tutorial and have learned some great technical and design techniques along the way. This is Steve Holmes from Energy Design and I'll see you again soon.